Hello, my wonderful church family and to the viewing audience. Welcome to Grow, Go to Grow Christian Center Bible Study. I am Minister Elena Baji, and I extend to each of you mercy, grace, and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Before we get started, let's begin with prayer. Bow our hearts together, please. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and acknowledge that you are the one and only true living God. We thank you and we are so full of gratitude for our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit, whose presence is with us. And my faith and confidence are that Holy Spirit has anointed me to give this message. And I ask that he opens up your spiritual ears to hear, your spiritual eyes to see the truths that are in the Word of God. Father, give the listeners knowledge, give them understanding and wisdom, to apply what they learn and to have victory in their lives. And Father, we pray that each people accept those who need to accept the spiritual invitation that will be given at the end of this message in order for them to come into the kingdom of God. And for that, Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory in advance. And we thank you in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Now, uh, the title of this message is Emotions Exposes the Truth. Emotions Exposes the Truth. Yes, emotions exposes the truth about what's going on inside of you. These emotions have nothing to do with anybody on the outside or any situation on the outside. Go ahead and um, write down these foundation scriptures. And I want to encourage you not to take notes as you view or listen to this message because you can always go back and review and then jot down those things that jump out at you. That's important for uh, whatever Holy Spirit is telling you. But the foundation scriptures come from Proverbs 29:11. Proverbs 29, 11, and Psalm 139, verse 23. Psalm 139, verse 23. Now, this message is not hinting, or it's not even hidden on the subject of some kind of over-the-top emotions that can drive a person to harm themselves or drive a person to harm somebody else. That's not the kind of emotions that I'm talking about. This particular topic actually came out on the heel of some unexpected changes that happened to some family members and friends around me. And as a, as a result of those unexpected changes, it just brought up a lot of conversation and those conversations were stirred with a lot of emotions. And these emotions came from the changes that they didn't expect and of all the new decisions that had to be made. Now, psychology defines emotions as being caused by someone or something or some event on the outside of you. But the focus of this message, again, as I said, is not on the natural man but it's going to be about the spiritual man on the inside of you and as it relates to the emotions that come up. Let's look at our first foundation scripture, Proverbs 29, 11. It says, a fool expresses all his emotions, but a wise person controls them. Now, I kinda wanna not be so harsh in this message to use that term fool. So I'm going to use a synonym. Instead of using the word fool, I'm going to substitute, substitute and use the word impulsive person. And an impulsive person is a person who reacts without giving the situation much thought. We've all done that. We're, we've done that. <laughs> we've all reached too quickly some kind of decision without first getting all the facts. So I'm going to read that scripture again and use the substitute of an impulsive person. It says, Proverbs 29, 11, 
An impulsive person expresses all his emotions, but a wise person controls them. Now let's look at the next foundation scripture, Psalm 139, verse 23, which says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. I want to just kind of dissect some of the words in that scripture because the heart there is not referring to that physical heart that pumps blood inside of us. This heart is a Hebrew word, and it means the seat of emotions. This is where our emotions come from inside of us. And then it says, search me, O God, and know my heart. To know your heart means not to be acquainted with it in that sense, but to perceive what's going on inside of you. To see it from a spiritual aspect, to find out and discern what those emotions are that's coming out of your heart. And then the scripture also says, search me, O God, know my heart, try me and know my anxious thoughts. Anxious thoughts. That sounds like stress. It sounds like uneasiness. It sounds like worry or something that has backed you up and made you feel hesitant about what you're supposed to do. But God tells us, be anxious for nothing. And then thoughts, we should not have anxious thoughts because thoughts in, in the Hebrew word means a disquieting or uncomfortable thoughts. So what we're supposed to really do is get understanding. We're supposed to get discernment. We're supposed to get revelation from God not from the emotions. The revelation has to come from inside of you. It, nobody else can give you a revelation about what's going on in you because you, they don't know you the way God does. Get the understanding on what triggered the emotion from the inside of you. So the purpose of this whole message is to redirect your thinking to focus on the cause of your emotions because it is so unwise to make decisions from negative emotions. You don't want to make important decisions out of emotions that you're going to later on regret. So the goal, you will be able to understand that emotions are the check engine light. You know that light that comes on in your car when, um, something is wrong. Emotions are the check engine light inside you to let you know that something needs to be corrected. Just like your car, when that check engine light comes on, pop the hood, go inside and find out what the problem is. Now, the purpose is to identify what is triggering that emotion in you. And again, you might think it's that person that's triggering that emotion, but shine the light on the inside from Holy Spirit and find out what it is exactly. So my main point, I'll go ahead and turn to 1 Samuel 16, 7. 1 Samuel 16, 7. First main point, God created us as emotional beings. That's just the way he created us. So we're going to have those emotions and they're going to be good emotions and they're going to be uh, bad emotions, negative emotions. Uh, that's from a dual system in the spiritual world. And I think our minister, John, uh, Claudine, when she taught her last message, kind of hinted at that duality in the spiritual world. There's good and there's bad. Well, there are good emotions and there are bad emotions. So um, we feel them. First Samuel 16, 7 says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his statue, referring to David, because I have refused him. For he, for the Lord see it not as man see it, 
For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh at the heart. Again, we evaluate things on the outside. That's erroneous way of evaluating who we should be because only God knows who he made each of us to be and it all comes from the inside. And um, you find out a lot about yourself as you begin to start looking at yourself from the inside like God does. The emotion is inside of you, but you can't see it. But you can feel all of the side effects that comes from that emotion. And actually, others can look at you and tell that you're having some kind of emotional experience. Even if you're quiet about it, that emotion is going to show up in uh, your body language. It's going to show up on your face. Your face get tense or show some kind of uh, expression. And it even shows up in your voice. So my daughter... Uh, called me out one day when we were having a conversation about somebody in the past. And she said, Mother, you're still angry. You're still really upset about what happened with that person. And I said, no, I'm not. She said, yes, you are. Because uh, I, I said, I've forgiven that person. And she said, no, nope. you're still having an, it's still having an effect on you because as you were talking, your whole body language changed, your face changed, your, your voice changed, and it came so harsh. And I was so glad that she made me aware of it because I wasn't aware of that particular emotion. And that's what we do. We go through certain situations and we're displaying these emotions without even being aware of it. And if somebody held a mirror in front of us, We'd be able to see what the other people are seeing in us when we are reacting to what's going on on the other, other side. So I thank God for that moment. I took time later on to ask God, what triggered that emotion? And it was not the person. It was a wrong perspective that I had on myself. And I was still blaming that person. We blame others for things that are actually wrong that's going on inside of us. So God wanted me to examine myself. And in doing so, I asked him, what should I do to change me? I couldn't erase that emotion, but I actually could use that emotion to see what I needed to do different in me. Now, actually, there might be something that's, as I'm talking, there might be some emotions that's coming up in you, or there's something that you're dealing with that's causing some kind of a negative emotion, because nobody's without emotions. It could be some kind of pain. It could be loneliness or some kind of affliction, trouble guilt. We, we, we take on a whole lot of negative emotions or some kind of burden, some kind of shame. <laughs> Paul said in Romans 9 too, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Even Paul went through negative emotions. But he also said in Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I said rejoice. Yes, we can go through negative emotions, but we don't have to stay there. Paul didn't stay there. He came out on the other side saying rejoice. And that should be our goal, not to stay in the negative, but to see what's causing it and come out with rejoicing on our heart. You can appreciate rejoicing if you've not experienced the heavy heart. It takes both in order to come to a balance in your life, just where God wants you to be. So what I want you to do is uh, do this exercise with me. Well, it's not you're not going to do it right now, but hopefully you can take out a blank piece of paper. And I want you to write this down on the paper. Um, let's see. I want you to um, put at the top of the paper, these are all 
the emotions that are uncomfortable for me that's happening to me right now. Why am I doing this? Because I want you to be acutely aware of what's going on inside of you, but not to let the dismissal. So put that paper aside and we'll go back to it later. Um, now, the second main point, God uses emotions as lessons. And these lessons are all about you. They're not about the other person. Remember, we're talking about checking the engine light, checking that light on the inside of you and learning what's going on. So Proverbs 4, 7 says, wisdom is the principal theme. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. So emotions can be for your spiritual growth. Learn how to respond and not react to emotions. Um, now, let me give you this example because we're just coming out on the other side of some very tense years that we went through where there was a lot of uh, political arguments going on. And these political arguments kind of force people to choose one side or the other. And in the process of making those choices, there are a lot of people who uh, broke up relationships with friends. They broke up relationships with family members, with church members, and it caused a lot of dissensions. And a lot of the emotions came out of those uh, thoughts, those opinions. And the purpose, everybody had the privilege of expressing their opinions, but their opinions should not, we should not have, no matter what side you were on, you should not have reacted to those opinions to the point that it caused us to sin, to be out of love and fellowship with each other. Those opinions, we should be able to look at somebody else's opinion and if it causes an emotion in us, don't look at the person. Ask yourself, why should your opinion cause this emotion? I can't give you the answer. Nobody can give you that answer. I'm just telling you how you should start looking at emotions when somebody else has has called, has uh, stimulated that emotion in you. And then I want to, you can't just push that emotion aside. At some point, take time to sit down in that emotion, feel it, and ask Holy Spirit, what is it that's going on? What is it in me that has caused this erroneous perspective that I have? And it's, and it's usually some kind of wrong pers perspective that you have about yourself that has been laying there dormant for years and years back, but it's coming up. It's coming up at this time not to react to that person, but to see yourself. And if you don't get the revelation, get the understanding about it, it's going to come up again and again and again. So what you want to do is to get understanding. So what word do you actually see? It's a word in emotion. There's a word in emotion, and that word is motion. Emotions come and they move and they are there to move you to a point where you can begin to see something about that emotion. They come, they move and they fade, but they leave a residue and that residue is some kind of feeling. So why is it so easy to let our emotions control us? Why is it? That's because we need God in our emotions. We can't handle those emotions by ourselves. Emotions are 
feelings in motion and they move and they only last as long as you want to hang on to them. In Joshua 24, 15, Joshua 24, 15, there is a portion of that scripture that says, I'm not going to read the whole scripture. It says, choose you this day whom you will serve. Choose. God gives us choices. And again, that goes back to that duality. We can choose one way or we can choose another way. So you have a choice. You have a choice to choose the kind of emotion that you want. And your uh, and you have a choice that you can challenge your emotion. You can choose something better or choose to stay and accept that negative emotion. Again, sit in that emotion, question it. Ask Holy Spirit, why am I feeling this way? Where is it coming from? My next main point, your emotions are your responsibility. It's not anybody else's responsibility to change what you are feeling. Responsibility is the ability to respond by being aware of your emotion. It takes examination about yourself, but don't fall into the trap of degrading yourself or beating up yourself while you are asking Holy Spirit. You, you'll probably begin to see or feel all the things that you've done wrong. That's not the purpose. You want to invest in those emotions. Choose emotions that work for you, not against you. Hey, how about just being a pleasant person, no matter if no one else around you is pleasant? Just you be a pleasant person. Every moment that you live brings the possibility of changing and becoming better than you were in that last moment becoming better than you were yesterday, becoming better than you were last month, but it takes being in charge. It takes taking responsibility. And when you make a decision to change what happens in you, you're going to be surprised what happens to you. When you change, you can actually open up God's favor to just surround you. The future always brings the possibility of being better than you are right this minute. Always, always reach for the best. After you list, um, you remember the, those lists of, uh, that list that I told you to begin to think about on that blank sheet of paper? After you make that list, this is what I want you to do. Look at those em those uncomfortable emotions. Number one, recognize what's going on inside of you. That What is the trigger? What is the erroneous perception that that emotion is telling you? Now, you might be upset because you feel that no one listens to you and you don't feel value, but that's not the truth. The truth is, you can always talk to your Heavenly Father. He always listens to you. And as a matter of fact, He values you so much that if you were the only person in the world, He values you to the point that He sent His only begotten Son here on this earth to redeem you back in fellowship with Him, that fellowship that was broken when Adam uh, uh sinned and disobeyed God and plummeted all of humanity into uh, having a rebellious, sinful nature. He values you so much that he sent his son to the cross to die for you, to make sure that he would never have to leave you or forsake you. Proverbs 4, 23. I want to read that out of the Amplified. It says, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. So uh, second point that I want you to do is repent from those erroneous perceptions that you have about yourself. I want to call it lie, but I'm using that term, erroneous perception. Repent. We're, 
we're the ones that's responsible for holding on to those perceptions over the years. Don't and don't blame others. Do not blame others. Romans fourteen twelve says so. Twelve says so. Then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. You can't stand before God and say he did, or she did, or he said, or she said. Ask God to forgive you for believing that erroneous lie, that erroneous perception when it comes up again. And then make a declaration about that. I can't say what that is, but form a declaration. And then the third point, get to the point in life in life where you don't let emotions fuel you get to the point where you don't get angry you don't get disappointed or you don't get frustrated you will free yourself from being in bondage to any emotion and it's a lifetime process think about how many friendships and how many relationships with loved ones that have been lost or damaged per permanently destroyed within seconds because you re Acted. Now, let me wrap this up. God wants you to be happy. He says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. He wants you to have peace. He said, peace I give you. So what if you lived your life every day happy and in peace? What a wonderful effect you would have on people that you come in contact with. Live to be a pleasant person. Even if you have to confront somebody, do it from a position of being pleasant. If you are unpleasant inside, unpleasantness will come out of you no matter what the circumstance. Uh, there is a poem by Rudolf Kipling. Uh, that name of that poem is If. I learned it when I was in, uh, I think it was in high school or elementary school, but let me read the first stanza. There are about four stanzas to this point, but let me read the first one. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies or being hated, don't give way to hating. And yet, don't look too good, nor talk too wise. And I'm gonna stop with that stanza, but this is a person who does not let emotions rule him. This is a person, and he and says, everything about you is going crazy. They're losing their heads and blaming it on you but this person was able to keep his emotions stable. Now, if, if you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have everything you need to be a humble, pleasant, emotional person and live an abundant life. It's all available to us in his word. But if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you feel a tug on your heart, that's Holy Spirit drawing you to him. And you now have that opportunity by repeating this prayer after me. And this prayer comes right out of the Bible from the books, book of Romans, and it's Romans uh, 10, verses 9 and 10, and also in the book of Acts. So bow your heads with me and repeat this prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, your word says, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, I will be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'm confessing now that Jesus is Lord, and I believe that God raised him from the dead for my salvation. Father, your word also says, if I ask for Holy Spirit, you will give him to me. I'm asking you now to fill me 
with the baptism of your Holy Spirit, and I receive him now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for saving me and strengthening me with the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me be the first to welcome you to the family of God, and heaven is rejoicing with you also. It's a new beginning for you. There's more, so much more for you to learn, and we would like to help you by, by give, us, give us a call so we can maybe share some resources with you. And that contact uh, information is showing up on your screen. Before I leave, I'd like to pray God's blessing over you. Call the benediction, and it comes from Jude, verses 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. It has been my utmost pleasure to minister to you today. So I pray for blessings on your family and their families for generations and generations. May goodness and, goodness and uh, mercy follow you all the days of your life. Have a wonderful rest of your life. Amen.